In our last video about plotting this hyperbola, uh, we were able to see how we use the numbers from the Pythagorean triple. The Pythagorean triple we used was 11, 60, 61. And then we squared those numbers in the Pythagorean triple and got us, it got for us um, 121, 3600, and 3721. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to swap the two numbers, the numbers that are under x squared and y squared in our formula. And we're going to see how that alters our hyperbola. Now, before that, we're going to shut off all of the points that we did in the last video. Um, and we're going to turn off the labels as well. So I'm going to go through this and shut them off. And I can shut them off just by clicking those circles to the left of the entry fields in Desmos. Okay, and shut the rest of these off also. And then to turn off the labels, we just uncheck the label boxes. Um, I don't want to delete any of these things. So that's why I'm not clicking on the X. I want to hang on to them. There we go. Okay, so we've shut off everything, all the points and all the labels, all the axes. We've shut them off. And now we're going to uh, change the numbers. So the first one we'll do is underneath the x squared, and we're going to exchange that with 3,600. And then we're going to change the x squared, or we're going to put the number that was under x squared under y squared, and now we have 121. Okay, and notice that that changes things significantly. Okay, so here's how we can modify what we just did. Okay, first of all, notice that the vertices are now at 60 comma 0 and negative 60 comma 0. Now, um, we had points that were like that before, um, but they were co-vertices. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap these points, swap these numbers. We're going to call this 60 comma 0, like that. And this is no longer a co-vertex, but it's going to become a vertex. And we want to remember to swap those two numbers in the label as well. Okay, so that's the vertex. You can turn that on. So there's our first vertex. And then we're going to get this, the next vertex. It's going to be negative 60 comma 0. There we go. And then this is no longer a co-vertex, but it is a vertex. And again, we want to make sure that um, we label this correctly, so it's negative 60, comma, 0. And there we go. And let's plot that other point. Okay, so we have the two vertices. And we wanted to plot the transverse axis that joins the two vertices. And so, very simply, we're just going to go back and we're going to exchange those two numbers again. It'll be 60, comma, 0. And the other point is going to be negative 60, comma, 0. And there we go. So we have the appropriate labels on our new vertices. And we have plotted the transverse axis. OK, that is the transverse axis. So um, now we're going to uh, plot the conjugate axis. And we're going to plot the co-vertices. So these points. Um, the, um, the co-vertices are now going to be associated with 11 because notice that the 121 is under the y squared. The square root of 121 is 11. So that means that we have to turn this into a y-coordinate. So 0, comma, 11, like that. Okay, and this now becomes a co-vertex. So we're going to call it a co-vertex, like that. And we want to make sure that we label it correctly. So it's going to be 0, 11. There. So that's our first co-vertex. Let's turn that point on. There it is. OK, and then the second co-vertex should be 0, negative 11. And let's label it correctly. 
So that's now going to be a covert X. Whoops. There we go, covert X. And the coordinates of the covert X are 0, comma, negative 11. And let's turn that one on. Okay, so now we have our covertices. All right, and so we need to exchange the x and y coordinates of these two points also, 0, comma, 11. And then the other one is 0, comma, negative 11. There. And then let's turn this on. There. So there is our covertex. Our covertices and and also our conjugate axis. Now the ne next thing that we're going to do is we are going to um, we're going to uh, swap the coordinates of our four corner points on our X box. So let's just we're going to exchange these, right? So it's instead of being negative eleven comma sixty, it's going to be sixty comma negative eleven. There we go. Okay, and let's turn that on. And notice this time that we are in the lower right-hand corner. So the order in which we do these things is going to be a little bit different. We're starting from a point, but we're going to go in a different cyclical fashion. We're going instead of going counterclockwise, or instead of going clockwise, we're going to go counterclockwise this time. So then the next the next point, we're going to um, swap these two values. It's going to be 60, comma, 11. And turn that on. So there's our next point. Notice that we are going counterclockwise. And then our next point is going to be negative 60, comma, 11. Turn that one on. And then finally, our last point is going to be negative 60, comma, negative 11. There we go. So those are, let's turn that on. Those are the uh, corner points of our Xbox. Okay, and then we have to uh, make those same switches in the polygon here. So the first one's going to be 60 comma negative 11. And the next one after that is going to be 60 comma 11. Like that. And then the next one after that is going to be negative uh, 60 comma 11 and then finally we're going to have negative 60 comma negative 11 so negative 60 comma negative 11 okay, and let's turn it on there we go Okay, and remember, in the last video we edited this, um, just to show you how we edited that, um, we first of all turned off the fill, so we don't want the fill on, and we made the lines, um, instead of being solid, we wanted them dashed. So there is our Xbox for this new hyperbola. Now, here's an interesting point. Notice that so far, um, we've been swapping the points and um, so we're going to do the same thing here with the slope of the asymptotes. Okay, so in other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the 11 where the 60 is, and I'm going to put 60 where the 11 is, and turn it on. And perfect, we have the asymptote that is going from the center to the upper right corner, or from the lower left corner to the upper right corner. That's exactly what we wanted. We'll do the same thing for the other asymptote. Where the 60 is, we'll put 11. And where the 11 is, we'll put 60. And turn that on. And again, we have the same thing happening. OK. All right, very good. So now the last thing to do is to deal with the foci. And interestingly, um, since the numbers are the same, since the numbers under the x squared and y squared are the same as they were last time, 3600 and 121, um, what that means is that the
coordinates of the foci are not going to change. Um, the other thing to note was that we kept the minus sign uh, between the x squared and the y squared, but in front of the y squared. So as long as the y squared term is negative, the hyperbola is going to be open, opening horizontally, which this one clearly does. Okay, so what that means is that we have the same foci. So all I have to do is turn them on. And you can see it looks like they're covering up the vertices. Okay, well, let's zoom in a little bit on one of these vertices. I'll zoom in on this one here. And you can see they're beginning to resolve. So in actuality, um, the focus, and let's turn on the labels as well. Okay, so in actuality, the focus is a different point than the vertex. All right, so in other words, when the, when the number under the x squared is larger, um, the vertex and the focus are going to be much closer together. When the number under the x squared is the smaller number, then the distance between the focus and the vertex will be much larger, as they were in the last hyperbola. So let me zoom back out, and let's take a look at the overall Picture. Actually, let's, uh, let's zoom out quite a bit. And again, we can see um, the way the branches of the hyperbola approach the asymptotes. They get closer and closer to those lines, but they never touch those lines and they never cross them. Right? And we could, in fact, we could move this way over like this, and we would see that they're getting closer and closer. If we zoom in over here, Keep on zooming in. Hopefully you can see that the dashed line and the solid line are resolving and that the solid line never touches the dashed line. So that's good to know. So let's just zoom back out and move over to the center here. And we're going to zoom in a little bit further. See if we can, there, like that. So we can still see the branches of the hyperbola. We can see that the foci and the vertices do not lie on top of each other. Um, we see our transverse axis and our, co and our uh, conjugate axis, and we see the covertices. And uh, we see the X-box and the two asymptotes. And that's all we need to plot a hyperbola in Desmos. So again, I hope that this was very helpful to you. All right, scroll up here and we can see our original equation here for this particular hyperbola. And uh, we'll come back and in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to put a minus sign in front of the x squared term. And we're going to put a plus sign in front of the y squared term. And we're going to see how that changes this particular, um, this particular hyperbola. So hopefully, um, this was helpful. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.